it started in 1993 when I saw the Mosaic web browser. That was when I got really interested in the web. I've been doing Gopher and IRC and other internet related things before then. Uh, but with Mosaic, I could suddenly explain what I was doing to my mother. So I knew this thing was going to be very, very interesting. I was living in Mountain View, California, but I moved back to Toronto to do consulting. And I ended up consulting for a number of companies and I wrote the same code over and over, basically CGI scripts written in C. And I wrote similar code to handle forms and post data and filtering and all the, all the sort of common web things you end up having to write in C if you're writing raw um, C CGI programs. So that was getting tedious. I'm not very interested in programming. It's kind of tedious and boring. So if I could reduce the amount of time I had to spend programming and maximize the, um, the output and get to the solution quicker, that, that was my goal with PHP. I put together all my common stuff into a C library, hacked it into the NCSA web server, and then added a little templating system on top of that to let me easily call into it. And that was the first version of PHP. It was a productivity tool for myself. So I could very quickly go to a new client and whip up a new web application for him and tie them to their database or whatever they needed. And every client had slightly different requirements, so I kept extending my tool. Then other people started asking me about this stuff. They asked me how I built these things, and I said, well, I'm using this little tool I built. And they asked if they could have it. I said, sure, why not? I mean, that's not what I'm selling. I'm selling my services of solving problems. The tool itself is irrelevant, really. It's just my hammer. Anybody can use my hammer, I don't care. Um, and then they started sending me patches, which I thought was really, really cool. And they found bugs in my stuff that I hadn't found yet, and which meant I could also go into clients and say, hey, here we go, here's a new version that fixes this, this, and this. And they thought I was being extremely productive, writing all this code and fixing all these things so fast. Um, so that's when open source really hit me. This was in 1994. 95 before the term open source existed but it really caught on with me that I got together with a group of my peers other people interested in the web and solving the web problem from all around the world we all had similar problems we faced similar issues and collaboratively we could build a tool that solved this problem and that was really how PHP got off the ground um, I learned a bit along the way that in order for this to grow, I had to give up control of PHP. I had to let other people have some control. I couldn't rewrite everybody's patches, both because I'm pretty lazy and it's a lot of work, but also to give people some ownership in the project. And once they have some ownership, once they have full control over their part of it, then they become much more invested in it and they become passionate and it becomes theirs, not just them contributing to my project, it becomes our project. And that really changed the, the nature of PHP. Um, and that happened around 1997 or so, where I really delegated it out and gave people full access to the CBS repository that I was using to develop this stuff in. And it grew like crazy after that, both because the web grew and PHP was sort of in the right time, the right place, but also because it was very, very easy to, to get in and get started contributing to PHP and using PHP as well, obviously, has a very low barrier of entry. We have close to 1,400 people with CVS accounts, which means they're, those people can all commit to some part of the repository, either PHP, Pear, Preckle, the documentation tree, anywhere in there. Now, they're not all active, obviously. We probably have maybe slightly over half the people have committed something in the last year and a half. Um, there's no management of these people, really. They sort of self-organize into smaller groups. It's impossible to manage 1,400 people, obviously, um, especially when they're volunteers and they're not actually going to show up to a meeting or to read, read their email or whatever. Um, but they self-organize around what they're interested in. And it's a meritocracy. I mean, code speaks. If you write a patch or you write a piece of code to implement a feature, that says a lot. If someone wants to disagree with that way of doing things, if they can offer an alternate implementation, that's a really good argument. If all they do is whine about it, that's a really bad argument, and chances are that the implementation will win. PHP 4 is, is really old. It's, it's outdated. There's a bunch of things in there that you just shouldn't be using. It. PHP 5 is so much better. 
your code will work, don't worry about it, upgrade. <laughs> we identified a couple of things that were really holding us back in PHP 4. One was the XML handling was really not good. Okay. XPAT, the library we based it on, was the best at the time when we started PHP 4, but it quickly became outdated. And the way we had made up our own DOM functions, um, we've always taken the approach that we take an underlying API and we mostly mimic it, but we try to simplify things a little bit so you don't have to call every C-level function. We did the same thing to DOM, which was a bad idea, because people know exactly the DOM um, spec and what functions should be there and how they should work. So that was not an interesting way of doing it. So in PHP 5, we rethought it. We completely followed the DOM spec for the, the DOM functions, but then we also added a different interface called Simple XML, which gave you a really, really easy way of handling XML. If we're going to have object orientation in PHP, it should be real object orientation. It shouldn't be this half-assed thing we did in PHP 4. So that was the other thing. Either we throw away OO or we fix it. So those were the two big pushes for PHP 5. And they're both sort of rational, good decisions, I think. Um, I don't think it was a big change in attitude. It was more, look at, look at where we are. This is not where we want to be. We want to fix our OO. We want to have better XML handling. We want to clean up some things. If I could make PHP, my little hack, work for Yahoo, then it should work anywhere. And the first thing I had to do when I took the first version of PHP 4 into Yahoo was strip out a whole bunch of system calls because I looked at the set of system calls it took to serve up a request. It was way, way too many. Nobody had really looked at it at that level to reduce the number of system calls the way I needed to at Yahoo. So my very first thing was to cut a whole bunch of features out of PHP 4, and we ran this crippled version of PHP 4 for a while. It was really, really fast, but it was also quite inconsistent and wasn't like the normal PHP people were used to, so there were some surprises, and that wasn't a good thing. But eventually these things trickled into the main PHP. So in PHP 5, we have something called a real path cache, which came directly out of that, um, and a couple of other features that just helped to reduce the number of system calls. Um, the filter extension for security work came out of that as well, because you can be as fast as you want, but if you're insecure, what's the point? So the filter extension helps you write better and more secure web applications by putting a filter in front of all user data. So those, the performance work and the security work that I did for Yahoo came directly out of Yahoo and into the public version of PHP. PHP is a high level, thin layer on top of libraries and other technologies for solving the web problem. So we do have to change it and we have to meet the, both the demands of the web and also the expectations of users. And wherever that world goes is where PHP is going to go.